Okay, let's look at some basic problems where we would use the order of operations. Now, with it being summertime, I was searching on Amazon because I realized that we needed some new pool floats for our pool. So I found this adorable unicorn pool float, and of course I can't have just one, I have to have two. So I see that they are only $25, so I decide that I am going to add two of these unicorn pool floats to my cart in Amazon. Now, another surprise is that I find out that in my Amazon account, I already have a $98 credit. Perfect. This means I can buy my two unicorn pool floats and I will still have some money left over. So let's figure out how much money I will have left over. Well, I think the first thing we all can agree on is that I'm going to buy two of these pool floats so at $25 each, I'm going to be spending $50. Now, I have that wonderful $98 credit in my Amazon account. So if I subtract the $50 I'm spending on the pool floats from the $98, we can agree that I will have $48 remaining in my Amazon credit. Perfect. Next time I want to go shopping, who knows what I'm going to buy next? I will have $48 to spend. Okay, let's take a look at that same problem about my unicorn pool float, and let's just look at it in a little bit more detail. So many of us have heard of the acronym PEMDAS, P-E-M-D-A-S, to help us <clears throat> remember the steps for the order of operations. So that's what we're going to look at. Now let's take our problem about our pool float, where we started with a $98 Amazon credit, and then I purchased two of those pool floats for $25 each. So what I have here is the number 98, and then from that I'm going to subtract 2 times the amount of the pool float, which is $25. Now we can see down here in the bottom left I have my steps of my order of operations. Now one thing I want to comment on is that a lot of people think there's 6 steps to the order of operations. P-E-M-D-A-S, that's 6 letters. But you'll notice here how the way I have them grouped, it's really only 4 steps. So the first step tells us to do parentheses. Now, we have to be careful here. That means we're only doing anything inside of the parentheses. Well, I do have parentheses in my problem, but if I look inside of it, I just see the number 25. It's already simplified. There's nothing to do inside there. So I'm really going on to the next step. I haven't done anything yet. My next step tells me to look for exponents, but there's no exponents in my problem, so I can cross off that step and go to the next step, which brings me to multiplication and division. So it tells me to do all multiplication and division in order from left to right. So what that means is, is I'm going to scan my problem from left to right, just as if I were reading a sentence, and I'm going to do whatever I see first, whether it's multiplication or division. A lot of people think M has to come before D all the time, but it doesn't. I'm just going to do whatever I see, multiplication or division. So as I scan my problem from left to right, I have some multiplication. So I'm going to first multiply the 2 times the 25. That means I'm going to have 98 minus 50. Now, there is no more multiplication and division, so I'm done with that step, and I can move on to my addition and subtraction. Again, looking at my problem from left to right, all I have left is my 98 minus 50, and there we see that we come up with the same answer of 48. Let's look at another example here. We have 14 minus 8, and then in parentheses we have 5 minus 7, and that quantity is being squared. Let's recall our steps to our order of operations, and let's start going through the steps one at a time. So our first step tells us that we do anything inside of parentheses. Well, in this problem, there's actually something to do inside of the parentheses. We have to do 5 minus 7. So we know 5 minus 7 is negative 2. So my problem is now 14 minus 8, and then in parentheses I have negative 2, and then that's being squared. So, so far all I did was the 5 minus 7. Now, I'm done with parentheses. I got it down to negative 2 inside the parentheses, and there's nothing else to do inside of the parentheses. So I'm going to move on to exponents. So I see that I have a negative 2 being squared. I'm going to go off to the side and do this problem, this part of the problem separately so you can see where we're getting the answer. 
So if I have negative 2 being squared, that's the same as taking negative 2 and multiplying it by itself for an answer of positive 4. So I go back to my original problem, and now I have 14 minus 8 times 4 inside of the parentheses. Now, those parentheses, since there's nothing to do inside, those parentheses stand for multiplication. So there's no division here, so we're just going to do the multiplication step. So now I'm going to do 14 minus 8 times 4. Since 8 times 4 is 32, that gives me 14 minus 32, which leads me to my next step of either addition or subtraction. So I'm going to do my subtraction, and I can see that my answer is negative 18. Okay, let's look at one last example. We have 2 to the power of 3 minus 18 divided by 3 times 2 plus 7. Let's not forget our important steps over here. Now, you'll notice our first step, as always, is parentheses, but we have to remember that means we only do what's inside of the parentheses. So I know I see parentheses here. I see the 3 and then the parentheses with the 2, but in this case, these parentheses represent multiplication, and they're telling us to do 3 times 2. There's nothing to do inside of those parentheses, so I don't do that step yet, because that's actually an M for multiplication step, so that's not going to come till later. So I don't have anything to do inside parentheses right now. That leads me next to exponents. I do have exponents. I'm supposed to do 2 to the third power, so I'm going to show that in the bottom of the screen. 2 to the third power means I have 3 factors of 2, or 2 times 2 times 2, which equals 8. So now I'm going to go back up to my original problem, and instead of 2 to the third power, I'm going to write 8. Minus 18 divided by 3, divided by 3 times 2 plus 7. Okay, we're done with exponents. That brings us to our next step of multiplication and division, and I do them in order from left to right. This is very important. I don't necessarily have to do all my multiplication before my division. I look at the problem from left to right, and I do whatever comes first between multiplication and division. I leave adding and subtracting for the very end. So as I look at this from left to right, division actually comes first, and that's okay. So I'm going to do 18 divided by 3. So I'm going to recopy my problem. I start with 8, but now I'm minusing 6 times 2 plus 7. So that 18 divided by 3 became 6. Now I still have that multiplication to do, 6 times 2. So this becomes 8 minus 12 plus 7. Now I'm done with my multiplication and division, and I can move on to addition and subtraction. Same rule for addition and subtraction. I do them all from left to right. So I don't necessarily have to add before I subtract. If I look at this problem from left to right, subtraction comes first, 8 minus 12. We know 8 minus 12 is negative 4 plus 7. So now my last step is addition, and negative 4 plus 7 equals 3. So my final answer is 3.